In this video, we're going to be taking a look at two different RC circuits where we go ahead and analyze what the current is initially after the switch is closed, and then also what the charge delta V and total capacitance is for the capacitors involved in each of the circuits. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one on the left first. Now, initially, as the electrons flow around, the two capacitors are temporarily going to act as a short and we're just going to have a regular current flowing through the 2 and 3 ohm resistor. Now, because they are wired up in parallel, um, we want to make sure we add up the inverses of each of them and set that equal to 1 over RT in order to find our total resistance for that little parallel chunk. If we go ahead and rewrite those fractions, that's 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6 equals... 5 over 6 and that equals 1 over RT. So if you go ahead and do a quick little cross multiply, then your RT comes out to 6 over 5 or 1.2 ohms. Now with that being said, we have everything we need to use Ohm's law and we have the total voltage of 12 volts divided by the resistance of 1.2 ohms. And then that leaves us with a current of 10 amps. So that would be our initial current at time equals zero as soon as the switch is closed, or you can call that I naught as well, uh, the initial current. Now, secondly, after the current has run for some time, our plates gonna, and our capacitors are gonna start to get charged up. And from there, we're not going to have any current flowing through these resistors after some time has passed. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens to each of these capacitors. Now, because they're wired up in parallel, the total capacitance is going to be the simple sum of each one of them. So if we want the total capacitance, it's just going to be 2 plus 4 equals 6 microfarads. And the thing we know about each one of them, because they are wired up in parallel, they both have the same potential difference of 12 volts. So 12 volts for this branch and 12 volts for this branch over here. So if we want to find the individual charges for each one of them, we can go ahead and do that. So we know that Q equals C times V, the capacitance times the voltage. So for the green 2 microfarad one, we can uh, go ahead and plug in two microfarads times the 12, and then we get 24 microcoulombs. And then for the four microfarad capacitor, we have four times the 12 volts, and that's 48. And then if we wanted the total charge between the two, then we could go ahead and add those up. And then the total charge would be 72. And that pretty much sums everything up for our first circuit. So just to recap, our capacitors are gonna initially act as a short allowing the current to flow through these resistors. If they're wired up in parallel, which they are, we're going to add up the inverses of them and then do a little cross multiply to find the total resistance of that chunk and then find the current of 10 amps. Now that 10 amps is slowly going to decay down to zero amps. And as that's happening, our plates on our capacitors are starting to get all charged up. And we have a total resistance by taking the regular sum of the two. And then we can go ahead and find the individual charges on each one of them because we know they each have 12 volts across each one of them because that's how um, electrons work moving through different branches if they're wired up in parallel. And then we use those 12 volts for each one of them along with their individual capacitances to find our charges. And we have our two individual charges here and we added them up to find our total charge. Now let's go ahead and clear a little space and check out this second circuit. Now for our second circuit, it's gonna act pretty similarly to where these two are temporarily gonna act as a short and then the charge is going to flow around this way if you're talking about the electron flow. 
and we're going to have a total voltage of 10 volts and a total resistance of 10 ohms with that single orange 10 ohm resistor. So we just have one amp flowing through the circuit. And again, that's the moment where the switch is closed, which we can call our I not our initial current, which means that there's one amp flowing through the 10 ohm resistor and it would cause a 10 volt drop because it's the only resistor in the circuit. Now, after the circuit has been closed for some time, just like the previous one, we're going to have our capacitors get all charged up as it's reaching its steady state. And then the potential difference and the current are going to decay. Now for this one, the two capacitors together actually have a lower capacitance because it's kind of like acting like one big capacitor with a big gap in between. And that bigger distance is going to give it a lower capacitance. So what we're going to do is for this one, we have to use the inverses to get the total capacitance. And then we're going to go ahead and rewrite these fractions. And then we're going to end up crossing them like we did with the previous one. And then we have the CT over here and then 10 over three or 3.33 as our total capacitance of both of those two capacitors combined together. Now for two capacitors that are wired up in a series, they're going to act a little different. <clears throat> they're going to have the same exact charge, but they're going to have different potential differences across each one of them. So what we can do is we can go ahead and find the total charge acting on both of them. And what we're going to do for that is take our total capacitance times our voltage and then multiply those. And then we have a total charge of 33.3 .3 microcoulombs. Now, each one of those capacitors are going to be charged at with 33.3 .3 microcoulombs. So that Q T is going to be our individual Q for each one of those. So what we can do for our purple capacitor, we're going to take Q and set it equal to C times V like we did previously on that other problem and take that 33.3, set it equal to the C and then find the V. And that's basically dividing both sides by 10. And then we get 3.33 volts. And then for the blue 5 microfarad, same setup, except we replace the 10 with the 5. We're going to divide both sides by 5. And then we're going to get 6.66. Okay, so 6 and 2 thirds and 3 three and a third, but I just take took the approximation of both of those. So we have a charge of 33.3 .3 in total and individually for both of the capacitors. And here is the potential difference across each of those capacitors once they reach their steady state. So I hope that was helpful to you in analyzing two different RC circuits and then finding some charges, capacitances, and voltages, and currents as well. Thank you for watching and listening.